The reading of God's word this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, I'm sorry, chapter 4, be reading from verse 1 through verse 4. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. What is Lent, and how do I observe it faithfully? It's the question we'll be reflecting on this morning. I think the three points that I want to make are all embodied in this particular passage. For starters, Jesus was harnessing the power of heaven for something that he could not do without it. It's interesting, the text does not read, he went into the desert to fast. He went into the desert to be tempted. He was going to be tempted to be derailed from taking the road of his ministry. The power that he needed to overcome those temptations, the power from heaven, was the reason he fasted. Jesus fasted to call down this power from heaven that he would need to overcome the temptation. The first main point of fasting is to pull heaven down for your sake for someone else's he was fasting from something and he was fasting to something in other words he was loosening his grip to be clear he was loosening his grip on what is temporary That is life here, feeding the body, and taking hold of what is permanent and or eternal. Fasting from food, he was tempted, probably one of the most obvious statements in all of Scripture. Jesus fasted for 40 days and was hungry. And thus tempted, and speaking back, pushing back on this temptation, man does not live on bread alone, but by the very Word of God. In Lent, we do these three things. We call heaven down for our sake or for someone else. We loosen our grip on what is temporary. And we take hold of what is permanent. This pattern of Jesus fasting for 40 days is something that is seen throughout Scripture. It's not an anomaly. In in the Old Testament, you know of Moses tasked with the humongous job of leading two million people out of slavery into some newfound freedom. It's It's not hard to think of how difficult it is to deal with someone with newfound freedom. I imagine my kids and them going off to college. That can be a very dangerous situation. Someone without that sort of freedom now has that sort of freedom. can be hard. Imagine two million college students. And Moses was tasked with guiding, leading, providing order, even creating a godly atmosphere in the midst. You may be aware of that story. You may not be aware 
that to take upon this enormous responsibility, Moses went through a 40-day fast. That's what gave him the wisdom. King Jehoshaphat, surrounded by enemies, was outflanked in military might. To win the war, he went on a 40-day fast and would win. Esther, we know, saved her people from extinction. You may not know that in preparation for doing so, she went on a sustained period of fast. Elijah, you may be familiar with, at a time in his ministry, lost his vitality and energy. You may not be aware that to get it back, to carry on this precious ministry, he went on a sustained period of fasting. You're familiar with King David and how his decisions put some serious distance between he and God. You know the mistakes he made with Bathsheba. You may not know, to close that distance, to turn back to God, to get in fellowship once again, he went on a sustained period of fasting. And so we have a great picture here of Jesus following in this tradition. You know that Ezra began the work of the wall around Jerusalem. He did so only after fasting. You know that Nehemiah finished the great work of the wall. You may not know he did it only after a sustained period of fasting. Jesus is following in the footsteps of those who have went through the practice of calling down heaven, the power and resource therein, by loosening one's grip on what is here, temporary, and taking hold of that which is eternal. Jesus would even tell His disciples when they would try to relieve someone of a demon or a certain level of darkness, that sort of darkness you can only deal with through prayer and fasting. Fasting is a spiritual resource that is available to all of us if we will but observe. On Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, this community is called to a period of 40-day fasting. Ash Wednesday. There are many distractions to a 40-day fast. Mainly because, well, we don't want to suffer. We like to be comfortable. In fact, we get very creative with the ways in which we can pleasure ourselves in our homes and make things comfortable. Um, This natural tendency of ours, I think, is best uh, personified in what has uh, been sort of growth on the Lent observation. Let me explain this growth and our tendency to, to pleasure and comfort. Hundreds of years ago, as Christians were observing Lent, they started taking everything out of their cupboards that they would be fasting from, and instead of just throwing it away, they would cook it and have a party. Why not? Well, this caught on and has become, for many, the biggest part of Lent. That is the preparation of it. The English call it Fat Tuesday, and for good reason. The French call it Mardi Gras. This thing has woken up and has, has become the primary point for many people. And so you have courts and kings and queens and parades and balls. And, and I'm not trying to say that I am anti Fat Tuesday or Mardi Gras. If you have a ball, invite me. Uh, if you have a parade, I want to come. What I am saying is, Mardi Gras is not the Mardi Gras is not Lent. It is peripheral. It is not even a part of it. It is a preparation of it. And we it's amazing. It is amazing to me how creative we get in seasons of pleasuring ourselves and comfort but somehow seem to lose our creativity in seasons uh, of spiritual discipline and fasting so what should we fast from well to begin with you should fast from something that would cause intentionally cause a level of suffering we are following jesus on the via della rosa the road of the cross 
the road of suffering. The cross, was, the cross was the bridge between heaven and us. That is to be true. We have access to God through the cross, but that is not the only benefit of the cross. Jesus called those who would dare to follow him to carry their cross, to harness this road of suffering for the sake of harnessing the power of God. It's going to suffer. It's going to hurt. This is why on Ash Wednesday we have an imposition of ashes because our suffering is supposed to be an imposition on our lives. That's why it begins with the ashes. Moreover, the ashes remind us that the very things we are imposed upon to let go of They are temporary. They do not last. That's why the ash. And so we take hold of the eternal. So to begin with, what do I fast from? Something that's going to hurt a little bit. All right? If, if If you don't drink a lot of whiskey and chase women, then don't say, for Lent, I'm giving up whiskey and women. Find something that's hard. If you want to get really creative, connect it to... Something in your life that may lead you to one of the seven deadly sins. I mean, fast from something that you already need to fast from. If you need a reminder of what the seven deadly sins are, they are as follows. Pride, greed, lust, envy, gluttony, wrath, and sloth. And for everyone's edification, let me say those slower. Pride, greed, lust, envy, wrath, and sloth. I don't know why I take such pleasure out of reading that slower. I just do. I think, I guess it's because it's something we all need to hear. If you don't know how to fast from something that leads to pride, ladies, you like to look good. It gives you a sense of pride. Fast from hair products. For the whole month. Hairspray, hair coloring, or, or fast from uh, makeup <laughs> for the whole month. Brother Eddie, you want me to look like what I really look like? Yes, it's supposed to hurt. It'll hurt you and all of us around you. <laughs> Brother Eddie, why, why are you picking on women? Well, because as a male, it's funner to pick on women. Guys, You have plenty of toys in your life that may bring you a sense of pride. Downgrade them a bit. Does your car have to have so many modifications? Put it back to factory specifications. Or give up your car. Car Carpool with someone through Lent. That may humble you a bit away from pride. I give up my car during Lent. Once a week, I will ride my bike to and from the house that means 15 miles one way because it's supposed to hurt you know where it hurts the most in my seat if you know what i mean i gotta toughen up the leather for lent or greed more than your share of something i'm sure you have let go of it daily bread means having your share that you need for the day. Not having so much more of your share that you have enough for tomorrow and next month and next year and 20 years down the road. Fast from something that may be a source of greed. Envy. If you find yourself talking about some other person a lot in your life, maybe you envy them or something, some space they have in your society. Fast from words. Yeah. Where more words are present, Proverbs says, so is sin. Fast from words. Count down how many words you say in one day and reduce it by a third. Could you do that? Fast from words. Or if you find yourself talking about yourself, maybe you have an envy problem because you're needing to elevate yourself above others. Again, fast from words. Gluttony. Boy, that is an easy one. Look, there's healthy eating, then there's everything else. Isn't it odd how in a grocery store there's a healthy food section? Like, what does that say about all the other sections? But don't say, well, you know, I can't afford to eat healthy. Look, 
A soda costs a dollar. Water is nothing. A candy bar is 85 cents. A banana is 17 cents. You can figure out a way to do it. You get creative about a great many things. Get creative about eating healthy. I know in the South, it's suffering to do that because down here, there is a food group called fried and it's hard to get away from it. But if you get creative, you can do it. Wrath. Maybe you have the need to be right a lot. You can fast from that. You can let relationship take priority over being right for 40 days and just watch what happens. You may be surprised at how many people you push away because of your need to be right through wrath. Or sloth, there's something in your life you know you need to get to and you're just not getting to it, okay? Fast from it. It's supposed to be hard. Let it be hard. This is the way, if devoted to pushing back on darkness, this is the way to harness heaven. Now hear me. This is not a New Year's resolution reboot. Okay? If, if, if over Christmas you went from 32s to 33s, and now you're saying, oh, fast. Well, this is a good time to get back into my 32s. You know, over Mardi Gras, I ate one three too many king cakes. And, and you excused it by saying, well, I'm looking for the baby. I've never found the baby, so I'm going to have one more slice. And you don't want the baby. You want the cream cheese and the blueberry. And so you went to 33. Some of you are thinking, yeah, 36 is 37. But this is not about just getting into smaller clothes. This is spiritual. If you can fit that in, great. But this is about fasting so that we can together push back on darkness and bring heaven down. I pulled a much I pulled enough hell up this past year. I'm ready to pull some heaven down and I want to do it with you. So specifically, what can you pass from? Those are just the seven deadly sins. If you want some specifics, social media, how much time do you spend on your phone? You can find out now there's an app for that. Okay, diminish the amount of time you spend on your phone. Or if you got to be on your phone, get a prayer app or a scripture reading app. Food uh, now look, don't do no food or water. Well, Moses was doing no food and wa no water. M Moses had a burning bush. If you can show me a burning bush, I'll sign off on it. Otherwise, do some substitutes rather than meat, do nuts. Or fast from fast food. And use that kitchen you paid $100,000 for. Or fast from man-made food over the next 40 days and just eat Natural food, you would be amazed at what you might do within your genetics. Or texting, fast from texting and actually call people and talk to them. Fast from texting and write them a letter. Who am I going to write a letter? Well, the 500 people you say are your friends on Facebook. Fast from soft drinks, just drink water. Fast from hoarding, give stuff away. You have storage that you've had for years. Either give it away or throw it away. Fast from it. Fast from your wardrobe. How often do you spend taking time to figure out what am I going to wear? Fast from it. Get a lint uniform that you wear all month. I got camouflage bib that I hunt in that I'm thinking one year I'm going to wear that bib all of lint. Can you imagine the, the conversations I would start with people? Why are you wearing that? I'm getting closer to God. I'm calling down heaven. Get a lint uniform. And if you want to get creative about it, get a neon orange uniform with black stripes. You would get to witness plenty. Fast from something. Fast from your bed. Sleep on the floor. And while you're there, pray for people who don't have that choice. You think fasting from your bed is hard? I mean, it's supposed to be. You could fast from your bedroom. You could pitch a tent in the backyard and sleep outdoors all of Lent and pray for those who don't have the choice otherwise. Fast from, fast from dating. Fast from silverware. Just use chopsticks all month long. That would stink. It's supposed to. You would probably eat less as well. This is for the sake of together. 
harnessing the power of heaven by letting go of that which is temporary and taking hold of that which is uh, eternal. So ask yourself one of these questions sometime today. What do you spend more resources and time on really? Really. Mardi Gras? Or Lent? And? What darkness could you stand to push back on? Let's say for a second that you believe you could harness the power of heaven to push back as Jesus did. I believe you can. I I know someone who told me a couple years ago, as they were fasting from their bed, they aimed it at something and they saw this power fall. Let's say you believed you had that power. What would you push back on? What darkness do you tell people about? In the life of someone you know, no one seems to be able to do anything about it. Aim it at that. Some darkness in your own life. Something you know you need to pivot from. You shouldn't keep doing that. You can see the effect it's going to have on you a few years from now, but you just can't. Stop. Aim it at that darkness. What do you spend more time on, really? Mardi Gras or Lent? What darkness could you stand to push back on? We all have it. And what can you fast from? What can you let go of? Wednesday, you will be invited to begin this fast with me. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for a community that I have the privilege of sharing a grand work such as Lent with. It gives me strength. It holds my feet in my faith as I imagine what I might do, what temporary thing I might let go of. It assures my heart that that there is something eternal that I can do better at taking hold of. And it gives me great confidence to believe that as I follow Jesus in this way, I might, as He did, Harness the power of heaven and push back on something that would give you glory. So I pray that you help all of us in doing this, Lord. Help us in this cooperative effort to bring heaven down. In Jesus' name, amen.